All right, everybody, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take Nehemiah chapter 11, and we'll just jump straight into it. Uh, comparatively few people lived in Jerusalem because of the rubble in the city in chapter 7 verse 4 now that the walls and gates were repaired the city was ready to be occupied by more people so let's jump into the first verse where we get those who will live in Jerusalem now the leaders of the people dwelt at Jerusalem the rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to dwell in Jerusalem the holy city and nine tenths were to dwell in other cities so one out of ten. And it wasn't enough to see the city walls rebuilt and a spiritual renewal of the people of Jerusalem. Now they concern themselves with getting more people into the city. So for a city to prosper and be great, it must be populated. And for more than 70 years, Jerusalem had been nothing but a ghost town. Now, over the last 80 or so years, it had been repopulated with the new temple built under Ezra and the walls rebuilt under Nehemiah. But this, the city still needed more people. And Nehemiah also knew the bigger the population of Jerusalem, the greater the resources for defense and strength in battle. He didn't rebuild the walls just to see some conquering army come and break them down again. And so the leaders of the people dwelt in Jerusalem. It was good that the leaders of the people set an example by living in Jerusalem. Leaders must set a pattern by their lives. They had no right to expect the people to live in Jerusalem if they themselves were not living there as well. In 1 out of 10, the rest of the people submitted themselves to a lottery system, where 1 out of 10 will be selected to move from the surrounding regions into the city of Jerusalem. So in the end, at least 10% of Judah's population were going to live in the city of Jerusalem. All right. Taking verse 2, blessing the city, the, the citizens of Jerusalem. And the people blessed all the men who willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. So they were blessed apart from the leaders who had a special obligation and those selected in the lottery who were also obligated. There were all those men who were willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem as well. These men had a special blessing. They had a unique pioneer spirit. They had the ability to endure some measure of hardship or discomfort to accomplish the greater work for God's kingdom. And it was in these days in the rebuilding of Jerusalem that God asked an important question through the prophet Zechariah. In chapter 4 verse 10 of Zechariah states this, For who has despised the day of small things? The answer is, many of us have. But these who offered themselves to willingly live at Jerusalem so as to take what is small and build it up before the Lord have decided not to despise the day of small things. And so to dwell at Jerusalem, if a if such a blessing is reserved for those who willingly offer to live in Jerusalem, there was something special about the challenge of living in Jerusalem. To live in Jerusalem, you had to reorder your view of material things. You had to give up your land in your previous region to take up some kind of new business in Jerusalem. To live in Jerusalem, you had to rearrange your social priorities. Certainly, living, uh, you had to leave some friends and family behind in your old village. And to live there, you had to have a mind to endure the problems in the city. It had been a ghost town for some 70 years and was now basically a slightly rebuilt, somewhat repopulated ghost town. The city didn't look at all that glorious and it needed some work. And so to live there, you had to live knowing that you were a target for the enemy. There were strong walls to protect you, but since Jerusalem was now a notable city with rebuilt walls, the fear was more from whole armies than bands of robbers. The whole village was nice, but not much, uh, not in much danger from great armies. So the Bible tells us there is a city coming down from heaven to earth. When God is done with this earth as we know it, and it calls that city New Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21 verse 2. People don't want to be citizens of the New Jerusalem for the same reasons many didn't want to be citizens of Nehemiah's Jerusalem. So those who volunteer were either the ones chosen by lots, who gladly moved to the city, or were additional men. All right. Now, in verses 3 through 24, we're going to get a roster of those living in Jerusalem and in Judea. And you have these leaders that are mentioned who are they live in Jerusalem. I won't go through the whole list for the sake of time and for the sake of butchering the names. But this extensive list in verses 3 through 24 includes tribal leaders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, military men, priests, Levites, gatekeepers, and civil and royal servants. And all these notable men in these passages and their families took the lead by choosing to settle in Jerusalem, and they set a good example for all of God's people. And so some priests and Levites, including temple servants, lived in surrounding towns and villages, and they commuted to Jerusalem when they served in the temple. Others who were not civil or religious leaders took up the residence in Jerusalem, and they were of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And in verses 5 and 6 of this list of uh, names, 
include the descendants of various family heads who moved into Jerusalem, uh, which included 468 laymen of the tribe of Judah in verses 4 through 6. According to 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 3, descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh also lived in Jerusalem. So the total of provincial leaders in Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 3 from Judah included Athiah, who was a descendant of Perez, and Messiah, a descendant of Shelah, in verses 4 and 5. Perez and Shelah were sons of Judah. In Genesis chapter 38, verses 2 through 5, and verses 26 through 29. Another son of Judah, Zerah, mentioned in Genesis 38, verse 30, and 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 6, is not referred to in Nehemiah chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. This will explain why 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 6 has 690, and Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 6 has 468 in the census. And in verses 7 and 8, uh, talk about in the Benjamite list, Nehemiah named one line of descendants in verse 7, but the chronicler included four lines of descent. This may or may not account for Nehemiah's figure of 928 Benjamites in verse 8, being slightly lower than the chronicle's figure of 956 in First Chronicles chapter 9, verse 9. And in verse 9, you had 928 laymen of the tribe of Benjamin. And in verses 10 through 14, we have 1,192 priests mentioned in verses 10 through 14. The priests were from six family heads in Nehemiah chapter 11, verses 10 through 14. Jedidiah, or Jediah, the son of Joreb, Jachin, Sariah, Adda, and Amashai in First Chronicles chapter 9, verses 10 through 13. The names refer to the same individuals with a few spelling variations. The son of uh, Jorib is Jehorib. Uh, Sariah is Azariah, uh, Amashai is Masai. It's difficult to know why the 1,192 priests will differ from the total of 1,760 mentioned in 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 13. And in, verses, uh, in verse 18, you have 284 Levites, and that's from verses 15 through 18. Uh, the list of the Levite family heads in Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 15 through 18, and the list in 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 14 through 16, also have s- several variations in spelling and additions or omissions. Bakbakiah may be the same as uh, Bakakar, and Abda may be the same as Obadiah in Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 25. The chronicler listed Haresh, Galal, and Barakai, whereas Nehemiah does not. And Nehemiah lists Shabbatai and Josabad, who did work outside of the temple in chapter 11, verse 16, whereas First Chronicles does not. And in verse 19, it mentions 172 gatekeepers. This is 3,044 men in all. The gatekeepers' family heads were two, whereas 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 17 names four. This may account for the difference in the total gatekeepers. 172 in Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 19, and 212 in 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 22. And in verses 20 and 21, the rest of the Israelites were in Judean towns in verse 20, except for temple servants in Ophel in chapter 3, verse 26, the hill in the city that led north to the temple. And in verses 22 through 24, uh, mentioned Uzai was over the Levites in chapter 11, verse 22. And the singers were under the orders of the king in verse 23, presumably Artaxerxes. Uh, Pethiah in verse 24 and chapter 9, verse 5, was the agent who represented the Jews' affairs to Artaxerxes and informed them of the king's wishes and directives. All right, and in verses 25 through 36, we have a list of Jewish villages and towns throughout Judea. In verse 25, in the post-exilic uh, or post-exile period under Nehemiah, some of the people of Judah settled in 17 towns and their surrounding villages as far south as Beersheba, in verses 27 and 30, which is about 32 miles south of Jerusalem to the valley of Hinnom, immediately south of Jerusalem in Joshua chapter 15, verse 8 for that. Karath Arba was an older name for Hebron, and you can see Joshua chapter 14, verse 15. And from verse 26 to 35, the 15 places where the descendants of Benjamin lived were north of Judah. The valley of the craftsmen may have been near Lod and Ono. And in verse 36, uh, some of the Levites who were living in Judah moved north to Benjamin. And we skipped over a lot of that. It's a lot of names, but we touched on all the the notes for that. Uh, That covers Nehemiah chapter 11, short chapter. Uh, In Nehemiah chapter 12, we're going to talk about dedication of the wall, and we'll talk about priestly and Levitical families. Thank you for joining me.